a man who will spend today picking out a box of chocolates from his dog's shit. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a choice, but to get on mandate, you get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Jeff Leach is running late, or somebody told him the show was starting at a different time. You no, never I, know. I saw the email. We, we gave him the right information. So All right. It's like he's running late. It's always on the table around here. So he's running late. We haven't <laughs> spoke to him, right? Well, I have a, we've, we've sent out a message, and we have not heard back yet. But we've not he did, spoke He did to confirm him. when we sent him the original details. Okay. The other day or yesterday? Yesterday? <laughs> I can, Let me check. I don't want to give you the well. Know, anyway, he should he should be here, so uh, we'll uh, we'll bring him in when he does right show up. But I still... arrival details are sent over a week ago. Uh, okay, confirmed. I think we got to check in earlier. That's all I'm saying. I think we'll make that our plan. Sure, check in earlier in the day. Okay, all right. Uh, as previously discussed, right? I see what you're doing. <laughs> yes, we discussed this a lot. Like we got to hit him fifteen twenty before the show. Okay. Don't you think? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, you, you told me this before air. Why are you Why are you doing this now? <laughs> I'm telling you now because the world needs to know because we've discussed it like 35 times. I understand. Is what I'm but saying. I don't. I don't see why you need to shame shame us now while the mics are on. Well, it's not effective when the mics aren't on. I think is the problem. Okay. I I think I think a little shame, <laughs> a little a dusting. I know. I know. You like a dusting, dusting of shame. shame. Well, I, my other attempts have not been successful. Right. That's what I'm saying. So just the dusting. Okay. The sprinkling. So we, can, we, will, we will give them the, if they're not here 20 but, minutes before, we will yeah, call I think, I think just go, where are you? Yeah. I, okay. think that's, I think that should be it. I think we should implement that. Okay. Because now we're not sure where he is. But we'll figure it out. All right. Uh, so Jeff should be coming in. I got stuff to talk about. Good news. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's what I was going to discuss. All right. So I don't think you should process this as shame. I I think (laughs) that's the problem. It's not a, it's not, I think it's the filter of shame. I I don't think it's real shame. I do, I do process it as a little shame. Plus I've known you for a long time. I could kind of hear it in, in the tone and the way when you, when you tell me when it's repeated this much, I can take Well, there's feeling. something I'd like to happen, which is a basic That's thing, I and I just it. think it should happen. I don't, I don't know why we don't do it. I think Chris it knows happen. that he's disappointed you, and it's, it's dis- that's, that's the most disappointing <laughs> thing to him right now. Yes, he's, going he's through disappointed. That. It's, not, it's not shame. It's um, <laughs> disappointment. Reverence, yeah. Reverence. All right, so speaking of that, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm semi-obsessed with people who sort of go through life half-cocked to be um, to be victimized. For instance, I was, um, I was driving, I was going over to the shop today, mm-hmm. and there's a street, it has two left turn lanes. It's two rows of cars turning left. Okay, I've, I've been on many of those with you. Yes. No I, no, I did not go around this group. This group was moving as I entered the lane. Okay. My street that I need to turn right on after turning left is immediate. It's immediate side street. So I got to make my way over. If I'm turning left and I'm on the left side, which I was on, I have to immediately move it on over to, to the right to make my quick right turn. So blinker goes on immediately. And I'm going slow because I'm trying to make my way over. And I got a guy in a Mustang just riding next to me. Okay. And I'm trying to go slow. I'm, I am going very slow with my blinker on because I have to immediately move over. And he's just pacing me, going super slow, uh. too. And I'm not making a move. I didn't saw at the wheel. I didn't do anything. I'm just going, I, how much slower can I go so you can go past me so I can make it over? And at some point, he just looks at me. He's like a middle-aged white dude, and he gives me the, what the hell? And I'm like, I don't know what the hell is. I'm, I'm trying to move over. I'm not doing anything. I'm going super slow. You've chose to slow down with me so that you could be put upon in this situation, yes. except for there's no situation here. I'm trying to... T- my street is the first right, and I'm just trying to move to it as quietly as I possibly can. Why is this an opportunity for you 
to be offended or upset or put upon or victimized. I'm, I'm not doing anything other than driving. The person who should be pissed is the person behind me because I'm going 14 miles an hour because I can't move over because you've slowed down to 14 miles an hour too and you're not letting me move over. But you're not turning on this street. You're not trying to get into my lane. You're doing nothing but going straight. Just You can go about your way and then I'll make my way right. over. Why? Why? Why is this? It's self-imposed yeah. is what I'm saying. And he, and he literally is like a six-year-old dude. And he just literally looked at me and he mouthed something like, what the fuck? You know? And I'm like, I don't even know where to begin with this. We're not, I'm not doing anything but trying yeah. to move over. And there's context here. There's a street. There's like restaurants. There's, there's reasons you could want. There's a gas station right there. There, there are reasons one could, could move it over. Right. So what I, is that? And then why go through life that way? Because it, it's got to be everywhere. Right. Yeah. I've, I and think is it a new thing? It's not a new thing. I, it's always existed. I think it's always existed. Well, there's a few things that have existed. One is there are, I'm convinced there are drivers who just want to screw other drivers over. Like it's a weird, <laughs> it's a weird power trip that they have. Yeah. They yes. have a, a level of uh, security inside their tin box. Right. Yeah. Nothing not, can touch them. Oh, this car wants to exit. Well, it's too late. I'm going to just, I'm, he, he, he lost that chance and I'm just going to keep blocking him or whatever. But I think people also bait. Uh -oh. I think you were baited. Jeff Leach has brought. I brought what's with the dog, Jeff? You, you told me to bring a dog. Was I drunk? <laughs> what would I ever say? Bring your. You would like bring the dog in. I can put the dog outside if you want. I'd say. I think it'd be helpful. Yeah. Let's Adam, put the dog. Outside. I said, bring your dog. You literally said, bring the dog. Next you time said, <laughs> oh, I'm I'm seeing impaired and I have a special <laughs> needs dog or something. Yeah. That's you know, the only I'm, circumstance. I'm my dog at home. Oh, my. I would announce, <laughs> bring your the dog. Big pillow, the big dog pillow. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. He brought a bed. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'd say 63 percent of dogs living in Los Angeles have a much higher living standard than I do. I think they're actually That's, living a better life than that me. That dog bed looked real comfortable. Nobody's ever followed me with my bed. <laughs> no, like, carried a bed. no one's ever been behind me with my mattress. And I went, just in case, <laughs> just in case I feel a little bit tired, I just want you with the bed. I or wherever I, I go, lay it down. Like, I got to go to the Home Depot later. Just take the bed and put it down. Yeah. I may, I may want to sleep on it. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Leach is yes. here, comedian, oh, actor. I've got no comms. All right, well. He's got, I'll take it off. He's got dates I've got dates. Up. I've got a dog. That's my date He's got today. a dog yeah. and a date. I, you, you really don't remember sitting there going like, hey, you got a dog. Bring the dog in next time. I love the dogs. I want to meet the dog. It doesn't matter. I, you know, it'd be, uh, to me, I'll tell you what it feels like. What does it feel like? It feels like somebody handing me a chicken liver omelet. <laughs> and I go, chicken liver? Like, Why I would fucking you hate that? And I go, that's what you wanted. You right, said right, it, okay. and, and I was like, that feels counter you hate to, dogs? to me. I hate people who bring dogs. Yeah, me too. That's I why I would have left her at home. I don't hate the dog. Oh, I, my God. Yeah, Justin, I, have, I have a dog. All I have, right. I have never brought a dog to anything in my entire really? life. I but you knew I would be home. upset if the dog wasn't here. No, I got told <laughs> to bring her. That's why she's here. Anyway, whatever. It doesn't We're, feel like I was present for that. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, yeah I think maybe that was it. I think maybe you heard it. But not from oh, it wasn't not, me. Not it from was, this. I literally didn't have it reinforced twice. Anyway, whatever. Right, anyway, it's, let's it's, talk, it's another let's reason talk for your about viewers you. to hate me. How you doing, man? How yeah, you been? No, they're 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 agnostic on you. They don't hate you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. The uh, podcast. Let's talk about Israel. <laughs> comic, <laughs> comic Cougar Convo is a uh, full episodes available on YouTube and uh, Patreon as well. Your co-host is an adult superstar, adult film superstar who I don't know because I'm not up to date. I'm kind of... I thought you were tapped into the old um, porn actress world. Well, or not anymore, now that you've, you're uh, a taken entity. Do you well, let's, let's, figure this, let's figure this one out. Um, I like vintage cars, but I don't like 90s cars okay. per, per se. Well, she's a vintage you know? porn actress. I mean, she's a MILF. She went into the industry as a MILF, Cherie Deville. She entered as a MILF. She entered as a MILF. She was like, um, I believe she was in her very late 30s when she started pornography. And what year was that? Oh, a few years ago. She's like early 40s now. Oh, okay. 
And there's a, she's fine with it. There's a market for that. It's all, <laughs> yeah, it's all she's good. Doing, she's doing all right. Yeah, she's, uh, she's very successful. She just hosted the XBiz Awards. She's at the AVN. She's won uh, Performer of the Year last how does, year. How does one make movie money in that industry these days? Not the Generally old by way, fucking right? people, Adam. I think so that's the, fuck, uh, yeah, the in pornography, it tends uh, to be the... Uh, let me write I've been doing it all along. Yeah. So when a man and a woman love each other, Adam, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes they place their genitals together, and that's, uh, that's <laughs> so an opportunity to make made. a huge amount of cash. Yeah. But I feel no babies like... are made. No, that not that kind of. That's uh, not important. Why would no. they have sex? I know. I know. I All right. Understand. So, but money through that industry now, through like having your own website you, and yeah. doing Only OnlyFans fans and, and, like and memorabilia and used panties and stuff like have ancillary. You ever, considered it, ever considered a little OnlyFans page for Corolla? I think the problem with the fellas is you'd have to go gay. I, or you could have sex with a woman. Yeah, but I don't think the payday's there. <laughs> no, you're right. It's you know more what I mean? there for the ladies. Like, right. I think if um, if any any of us or any of the ladies we've ever slept with went into pornography, the women would make a lot more money than we would, of course. Yes, yes. And they always talk about that pay gap. But, but- you've got a, a fan base, a huge and voracious fan base, who I think there's quite a large number of them who would love to see what your cock looks like. Mm. Well, I think we could do that on an individual basis, you know, just, just sort of like a kissing One by booth. one going around their house and knocking on the door like a Jehovah's Witness and just pulling it out. My Whoop. cock is very nondescript. It, oh, yeah? There's really no reason to show it to anybody. What does nondescript mean? Just like it's not... I, I mean, I, I sometimes marvel at the range mm. of the male phallus. Okay. You know, uh-huh. like... like Here's what I would say. I'm learning a lot about you today. I, you're going to learn a lot about a lot of stuff yeah, today. Yeah. Just, I don't believe your ears are much different than mine. Okay. Or Chris's or Dawson's or anybody in this building. I completely they, understand what you're they saying. They vary slightly, but not really. You know, mm-hmm. They're all generally the same size and the same shape and same whatever. Right. Dicks have a lot of range. I don't. I don't believe 100%. our pinky fingers are that different. I, I get there's differences in different anatomies, but the dick has a lot of range, and mm-hmm. and some have you know very veiny. You know, they, there's a lot of veiny cocks out there. You're right. They yeah. look like Wolverine's neck, <laughs> and and I don't. I don't get it. I'm also kind of generally confused when there's veins on guys that I don't think I possess. Also, if I saw a penis that looked like Wolverine's neck, I'd be terrified. That would be a gargantuan cock. And, and cock. intrigued, though. <laughs> yes. yeah. And intrigued. So uh, there's the guys that have like a, the, the crook in it, the dog leg in it. You know, right, it's right, got right. a little, bend, a little in bend in it. There's the bend up guys, you know, the sort of banana, <laughs> banana up yeah, yeah. guys. There's the big mushroom head guys. What's your favorite, Adam, of all the cocks? Uh, well, I will tell you that, you know, is 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 you know sad as this may sound, a, a cock in the in the porn industry right. is a part of it for me that is that's bigger than I care to admit. Oh, you actually spend a bit of time looking at the penis. I I look at it as a tool. And I don't like seeing a guy showing up to frame a house with a mini erector set hammer. Of course, it doesn't yeah, feel no, no. satisfying. You want, a, you want to a tool that can get the job done. I'm well. Let's 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 see if we can be honest here. I, I mean, I think I, you already are being pretty there honest. Are, there were plenty of guys in porn back in the day that just had a standard issue, sort of nothing to see here dick. Like you said earlier on, nondescript. Just uh, nondescript. Yeah, like if yeah. I wanted to see his dick, I could just find a mirror and Absolutely. look at my own. What do I need him for? Why, wait, it, hang on. Why would you need a mirror to look at your own penis? Sure, you just perspective. Look down. You're, a, you're a slim chap. You can see it. It's still there. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, th- 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 there was a metaphor. But, yes, I can see my own dick. I get what you're saying. Okay. What I'm saying is, is – I don't need him for this. I need somebody who's got something going on that's special. You want it to come out and you want to be like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa now. I do. It, it, and it's, it factors in to the entire porn equation for me. So an average size or small size penis, when you see that in pornography, it turns off the whole experience for you. You're not thinking like, you know, 
There's not enough stretch going on in this. I will hold my nose and watch this porn (laughs) because I took an oath many years ago, but I'm not going to enjoy it as much as I would. I like how you make it sound like military service. That's that's right. I'm a conscientious objector, but I will do my duty. So I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I understand. And you're six. You're six foot what? Two. Six foot two. So your penis can't be that. What do you think is average size? Can we just throw on the table, not the penises, but the – can we throw numbers on the table? I think there's a standard, you know, misnomer that it's six inches. But whenever – That's the average, or that's That's yours. the average. That's what they say. Okay. Yeah, but, I think it's five and a half in America. But whenever they do the study, it's below six. <laughs> right, right, right. So I, I think it skews. And sometimes these studies come out of Japan, which worries me <laughs> a, a little bit. I'm reckoning their average is not six. I'm saying, yeah, it it runs a little smaller than six. Slightly is what smaller. I would They're say, more petite would say gentlemen average. in the general. The height's yes. slightly lower, yes. you know, so it makes sense. Standard penis is 5.1? No. Yeah, in America. Yeah, it's not that big. And in Europe, it's slightly more, right? It's like 5.3 or 5.5 or something. Interesting. But for six foot two, six foot four, bro, I mean, listen, hey. I'm sorry. It is what it is. You might have an absolute fucking dong hanging there. Hey, I, I think I'm average. Yeah? Nice. <laughs> well, so... There's, but what I'm saying is, is there's nothing special about my penis. Okay, I've, I've is had, that a very like roundabout way to say that you got about a six inch cock? Yeah, I would say everything. I, you know, if you're doing, remember in high school they had the anatomy book yeah, where it had like yeah. the naked man figure. Yeah, that would be my dick. Okay, if you're just saying, look, we have to draw a dick. We don't want any questions about the guy's dick. We Absolutely. don't want people pointing at it going, what'd you do? Why'd you make it so small? I'm like, oh, my God, give me a break. His what, dick about, what about the balls? What about the testicles? Because the testicles can be pretty divisive. I think there's mm-hmm. a lot of – there's range in the testicle area as well. I'd say I'm, I would lean a little more toward the prodigious side of okay. the testicle. Are we yeah. hacky sack length? Are we like – because you do keepy uppies in the morning? I, you know, I've said – we have to do a water displacement test to really figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> but the so buoyancy of your you balls your can dog. only be tested. I told you to bring a graduated cylinder, but you missed that part <laughs> of the did, conversation. I apologize. How did we manage talking about cocks within too many? There's an animal magnetism between the two of us. I think there it, there's a homoeroticism that up until now has been unspoken. Yeah, yeah. But now I brought it out. Maybe of you. you you summoned it in me. Yeah. The siren song Coaxed of the homoerotic. Yes. I am a, that's what they call me. The homoeroticism siren. I'm like a mermaid of man. That's love. right. Many a ship has been wrecked so upon many your, pirates. So many bum your Rocky pirates shoals. have fallen to <laughs> yes. pray to my song. So Rocky Shoals would be a good gay porn name for that's me. That's a great name, yeah. Rocky Shoals. Rocky Shoals. The starring Rocky Schultz. Yeah, with his average dick. Yeah. But yeah. Bulls, boy, and balls. Oh, yeah. So, does everyone, when they watch porn, like a bigger than average dick, or is that just me? I agree with you, and I agree with you on this sense. I think the concept that if you're going into an industry that is fucking, you should be rocking a tool that sets you apart within that industry. Like you say, if you're a professional craftsman, bring the right tools, and as you ascend, you get buy better tools. Yes. Um, oh, well, let me ask you. I'll, I think there's something we can agree on here, Yeah. by the way, because we've discussed race on this program, but I think I'm yeah. in your corner on this one. Okay. Are you going to start talking about black men's penises? I'm not going to start, but I am going to finish. Okay. All right. <laughs> I believe there's racism because I don't think they would let a black guy in with an average size penis. Uh-huh. Right. Oh, I see what you're saying. There's and, a, there's definitely a lot of racism according to performers. I know a few black performers in the space. Mm-hmm. And um, just even in the titling, you know, they're like, why does it all have oh, to be man, like... Oh, Mandingo Warrior. And just like, just, I mean, I mean, listen, I've seen your browser history. I'm yes. talking about like, what's the, the uh, just the concept that it all has to be like, you know, uh, black stud ruins. Yeah. Black, it's like no, very, I saw... Black men are very old, rarely just I lovers, saw, you know, I with saw another this woman. old 70s porn, this vintage porn, and the black guy who's given it to the three white chicks is literally wearing a necklace made out of, like, tiger teeth. Right, right, Like, yeah. Like, I mean, this is 1974, so they just go, fuck him, whatever. Let's Do you know the this- comedian Dante Nero in New York City? You ever heard of him? No. No, so he's he's got a podcast out there, and he used to dance. You know Dante? He used to dance. They used to be like a stripper, mm-hmm. and his whole thing was like he used to wear like a loincloth and bones on a necklace. Is ne- well, there. Nero's yeah. black, isn't it? Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. Dante's, but the name Dante's Nero. Legend. Yeah, yeah. Isn't Nero 
Isn't it Greek, like Roman or something is like that? Is that Black? I mean, well, I, I don't know if his name's well, Black, that but his, his skin color most definitely is. Yeah, I he's do. A, I, you know, the only reason I know is when they, when you look up a bunch of like Ferraris, they'll go like, it's uh, candy apple red with a black Nero interior right, or right, something. Right. They use Nero, I think, sometimes when they're talking about black but, but either he, way he certainly played up the whole thing he said like in back in the 80s 90s even like 80s 90s you know like if you were a black guy in the stripping world you played up on yes you leaned you leaned in, lean into the lean systemic into racist it. so i hey, think look. yeah uh yeah, yeah even in nero the meaning of the word is black vigorous strong well what do i know what do you know jesus christ so it does mean black so he may have chose nero because it means black right like I chose Rocky Schultz. <laughs> that, I mean, that's his real name. There, there you go. There's Dante. Yeah, that's his. Uh, his real name is Dante Nero, though. That's not his actual. That's not like a. That's not a stage name. Yeah, we gotta, his maybe stage his name real was name. something like oh. was something like it was something like uh, the ma you know uh, the the Mandingo, Mandingo warrior or, or some shit like that. It was really yeah. It was pretty. So well I think there's two things going on with black cock and porn. Okay. My first theory is they discriminate. They yeah. don't let average sized dicks on attached to black guys okay. into yeah. porn. Number two, they only let big black dick in. The biggest of, of all the dicks. And it, it skews everything because the only black dick most Americans see is in porn. So we thus think mm. that they're this. Right. You know, I mean, like they used to say it all the time, like in the 80s, go, they'd have the black gangbangers, was always the black, you know, if you're doing the cop show or whatever, it was always the black gangbangers. They didn't show the black attorneys or the sure, sure, black sure, pharmacists. Yeah. So then people who came to this country who drove cabs would watch these shows and go, go black oh, people are oh, all in people. gangs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did that with Cox. Yeah, it's been done in a multitude of ways, I think. I think you're right. Yeah, I agree. 100%. There is a lot of racism regarding. Black men in pornography. Um, so what we should start a fund for the smaller to average sized black men who want to get into porn foundation. I'll get Quincy Jones on the blower. We'll <laughs> see if we can get an all-star set Maybe together. Oprah's into it. She could raise a few funds, couldn't she? She could throw a couple of mil in I'm for saying some average sized dicks. You have to feel for the black man with the average sized dick who's not in porn but gets with a woman who has seen the porn. Right, right. But she has expectations. I mean, if it's a white woman, she's probably heard the the the, the rife amount of um, you know of, of stories that oh well, all black guys are well hung, etc. So if you drop trowel, learn and, from porn. Yeah, is that's my not, theory. But again, yeah. I, not you know between that and a forty inch vertical, I'll take it in terms yeah. of stereotypes. <laughs> Uh, speaking a of black, interesting choice of words, but yes, stereotype. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take, take it. it. I'll but take yeah, it. I'll, <laughs> sorry, I'll take it. Speaking of this, yeah. this is a weird, had a weird disconnect. Um, speaking of the black community, right? I was uh, doing Byron Allen's show yesterday, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch of comedians on the dais, and it's like a game show. Funny, you should ask. And they're they're asking. I think the category was things that that couples argue about. Right. Right. And the guy who was up there was like Demarius something. He was a brother. He won. And and he was having to answer the questions. Like, is it A, do they argue about money? B, disciplining the child? Or C, where to eat? Or something like that. And he was like thinking it out. And he was like, and I was kind of, I, I don't know the answer either. So you sort of go, is it money? Or it's like, who's... Who's giving that kid the timeouts, you know, or who's, who's disciplining that kid or whatever? And the, the guy was looking at it, and he went, uh, hmm, money, who's going to whoop the kid? And I was like, whoop the kid? <laughs> like, it doesn't say whip your kid. Yeah, it, says, it's discipline. it says discipline. And I'm, I'm looking at it through Rich Whitey's goggles. I'm like, oh, who's going to tell them they can't play video games tonight? Right, right. Or they're getting a timeout you or had something. I wasn't thinking, who, which one of us is going to physically beat this kid? Well, how, what class would you say you were raised in? Were you raised middle, upper class? What was your, what was your upbringing? Did your I, parents have I, a few bucks? I was, I was lower. I was... Sort of lower middle, sort of, uh, but you know, sort of bumping up on the red line of poor, right? But with with strange factors that other poor people didn't exist. Okay. I I I grew up in a house. Right, right. The house is miniature and had one bath bathroom and one bedroom and was a shack. 
but most poor people don't have a well out here. Sure, out here, sure, you sure. live in an apartment. My grandmother bought a second rental house in North Hollywood and let my loser mom and me flop there when we were kids. So it was like a junker, but Damn, I had a- You were like a therapist wet dream. You know yes, that? This I had a house. Obsession with Cox. So it's like weird things. Loser mom. <laughs> yeah, I did weird. I, I, no, there was no money. Right. There was some welfare and some food stamps and everyone was poor. I asked that because I think it, class division things. implements how you parent a child. Like my parents were pretty, both pretty working class and absolutely I got a smack around the head. Do you know what oh, I mean? Like that? Yeah, I got a little clip around the I wasn't beaten. My father absolutely was beaten daily by his my grandfather. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think like, I don't know. I, I assume there might be maybe a slight class division there. I, I come still- from poor, progressive educated hippies right so even though we were poor we had none of the earmarks and they were hippies they're all about love and peace yeah my mum was brought up in Ceausescu's communist Romania do you know what I mean my dad was an East London working class East Londoner so you got beaten up you got smacked if you didn't do what you were told you got a clip around the ear and maybe this comedian I mean people of colour in this country generally I'm making gross generalisations but yeah they are generally on the poorer end of the scale of, of class division across the across America. I would say you could definitely draw a line between income and corporal punishment. Right, I think right, there's right. a there's a connection there. Sure. There's also cultural connections. Sure. Probably more in the certainly more in the black community, even if you said median income yeah. than others but then there might be more like i don't know feel like you filipinos like you probably got whacked with a flip-flop a few times i've gone the slipper i've gotten the belt yeah Yeah. i I think i think immigrant community in general (laughs) both actually okay uh but my my parents were educated and sort of evolved but not enough to make any money i get you and also i always sort of quietly thought that beating a kid takes effort and my parents took a vow not to put any effort into right, their kids right, and right, it's right. kind of a calorie he'll burner. beat himself eventually yeah life will beat him down yeah they don't need us there you go <laughs> he'll be f- the flagellation <laughs> will come the <laughs> self-flagellation right. will come eventually <laughs> yeah i thought that that does like i would never beat anyone else's kids because i'm not interested oh but you what if what they mean? were really stupid now i've met some kids that i've thought someone needs to beat that child it's not going to be me <laughs> But someone needs to give them a little clip around the ear just to shut them the fuck up. You know what I mean? I, I woke up to the new state of of where we're at with kids when I entered my home a have few you got years children, ago. Have you yes, any kids? twins, 17. Okay. I walked into my house about four years ago, and one of my daughter's friends in the entry hall, coming down the hall, just roller skated right past me. Oh, and you clotheslined them. And, and I clotheslined them. <laughs> I, I I did a roller derby she's move on her. flooring! And she, just... went, she went right past me. She didn't blink her eye. And she's like, hey, Mr. C. And she just scooted right past me. And I thought, oh, my God, we're in a new era. Because yeah. there's no fucking way that would have ever happened yeah, yeah. in the past. Roller skating. You weren't tempted to just stick stuff. a little foot out, just trip her up. A little whoop. Think I, fast. <laughs> the, the only thing I will sort of talk about is there's there's also a new era. It's all part and parcel the th- same thing. And this right. includes adults. A lot of adults do this. I don't know who these people are, why they do it, but they insist on sitting on your couch. Even if it's like a white linen couch, they insist on tucking their shoes f- sole down up on top of the couch. Like they just sit with their feet like just sort of tucked up on it. And it's like right. you walk in and you go, you're you, you're bending yourself into a pretzel to get the bottom of your shoes yeah. on this white linen yeah, yeah, yeah. sofa. If someone like, comes to your home that? and puts their feet on your couch, that person would never be invited into my house ever again. Oh, really? You wouldn't ever. Have, you wouldn't have it. Who does? I'm a shoe off house as well. I'm a shoe off household. Oh, you're household. shoe off. Yes. Shoes off household. Yeah, of course you are. Fair, Filipino. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, Not yeah, a yeah. shoe off guy. You're not. I, f- I feel like it's asking too much of the people. <laughs> I, 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 it's uh, very divisive. You're I right. It does split the crowd. House guests don't like Not it. to put <clears throat> the soles of their shoes on a cloth sofa. Of that, course. I, I feel yeah. like that. But that's how a lot of people sit. I'm convinced that. Those people are disgusting. F- yeah. 57% of women now sit with their feet on the sofa. Which, by the way, well, why well, do we have on. a sofa? Talk why do we have a race. couch? White women. Yes. Black women don't do that. No. Sure. Yeah, Filipino no. women. I'm amazing. I'm, I'm assuming, like a lot of Asian women, don't put their feet on the couch. They don't put their feet on the furniture like that. 
Is there a general uh, out of itness, for lack of a better term? Like, like I'll give you, a, I'll give you a perfect okay, example sure. of this. Uh, Mike August, who everyone who listens to the show knows, who like, he's a good dude, but he'll do things like when it's raining outside hard and he's walking in from the parking lot. And there's a floor mat, a doormat. He'll step over it. Like I'll take like an extended stride over the top of it and just like keep walking through it. And I'll go, Mike, wipe your feet. And he'll go, what? what? Oh yeah, okay. And like it's it seems weird, yeah. seems weird. There's a whole class of people. You're not <laughs> one of them. There's a class of people who come in here and they take like their cold glass and you go, "Here's your coaster." And they go, and they, "Okay." They take a sip and then they set the glass down right next to the coaster. Yeah, like, those people are fucking idiots. Are, are they fucking idiots? idiots? No, so, they are. They're idiots. They're self-absorbed idiots. That's so they Mike are. Yeah, August yeah. is over at the house. They never got beaten as a child. Those people. He, they should be beaten. <laughs> uh, Mike comes over. I get him, I pour him a glass, a drink. I know he likes the drink he likes. I have ice in it, so like the thing's sweating and stuff. Right. There's a glass end table. It's all glass. It's glass top, and it bends all the way down, down to the floor. It's just glass. And on top of it is a hardbound coffee table book with a jacket on it. And Mike's talking to me, and he sets his glass down in the middle of the book. <sighs> But not on the glass, which is right next to it. And I'm like, Mike, put it on the glass. He's like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. It's like a sweaty, <laughs> ice-filled cocktail in the middle of a coffee table book with a hardbound, with I'm, the, with the paper like, jacket on it. I'm getting genuinely anxious just hearing this story. <laughs> or are, are we jealous? I'm jealous. <sighs> jealous of what? How much of a self-absorbed, no, like, that non I can just sort of sensical s- dickhead that he just goes through life thinking that no, other people's but property a, are his Mike's to ruin? Mike's a good dude. Like, I just want to sail know. through life that way. I don't I'm know. I think my- he probably murders children behind closed doors. <laughs> There's no way you go in someone's house and put it on the coffee table. But why would you do that? Leaving a water <laughs> ring on a book. I think in his non-concentrational way, that was his coaster. Is he on the spectrum? Is he potentially like a little Asperger's or, or autistic? Well, actually, Asperger's, they say, doesn't exist anymore. It's just levels of autism. But is he autistic, oh, potentially? now I'm bumped up to autism. Um, <laughs> oh, are you Asperger's, are you? That means, you're, that means you are, yeah. Apparently, that doesn't even exist anymore now. You're, you're now let me explain. Let me explain how the Asperger's diagnosis works. Okay. People who don't like you <laughs> go to people they like, and they go... Don't you think he's a little bit on the spectrum? Right, right, right. And they go, well, what's he do? Well, he kind of obsessed. Wait, he, he told me to bring my dog to a recording. Yeah, that's right. And completely denied him of <laughs> doing it. Disavowed. And his partner disavowed also it. reinforced that invite. And then when I brought it, you made me feel like a prick. Yeah, <laughs> right. That, and you, you look up everything autistic, and then yeah. you go, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the problem with the spectrum. Right, okay. Every. every We're all on the fucking spectrum. We all that's do what weird I'm saying. shit that doesn't make on sense. On the to spectrum. People. Is like, the, you know, when they go, it's like when they announce, this is a gun-free zone. Right. Right. Okay, so your school, your church, your library, that's gun-free. Right. Until somebody brings a gun in sure. and fucking shoots everybody. Right. That, then it's not gun-free. And it's right, like, right. it doesn't mean anything. It's just announcing this is who we are. And I feel like the spectrum is sort of, we, we talk about everyone on the spectrum. So have you ever done an official, have you been for an official test, though? Like a medically, a clinical no, the only thing I've ever tested for was chlamydia, was, was chlamydia and dyslexia. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what was the dyslexia? Um, have you got it? No, just no. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was just like, sorry. Just Here. can't be bothered to fucking spell. Take That's a lollipop is, yeah. and a wind-up beanie. I'll validate your parking. <laughs> You're not. You just don't know how to read. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was That's sad. Funny. That was sad. I was kind of looking for something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like some diagnosis. Yeah. Something that could get me out of military service or get, something. Get you a, a service animal. Right. That's nope. for your dog. No, no such luck. No luck. Not, not on that. Oh, I got tested... I got tested for algebra once in junior college and got put into advanced algebra and never took an algebra class in in junior high or high school. That was a weird test. It's starting to make me wonder about these tests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or education in general. Or education in in general. How is it? I've never taken algebra class, but... Why we never taught fiscal responsibility at school. Oh, God. (laughs) Is everything part of a bigger... It's sort of sinister plot. Absolutely, one hundred percent. No, 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 no. We are being, we are being absolutely. You know, you know. I love a little, 
going mm-hmm. down the old conspiracy theory route. But I think, yeah, it's obvious. We're being we're being taught to be stupid and docile and sheeple and uh, as as you know as easily manipulated as possible. And social media has made that you know infinitely easier. So is the plan? We're just going to argue about racism and Taylor Swift, and then these guys are going to do whatever the fuck sure. they want. They're already while doing we're, it. They've been doing while it we're for arguing about everything. One hundred percent. They've been doing it for thousands of years, and it's not going to change any time. And then, what do they want? Oh, they already have what they want. We're a, we're all in servitude. Look, even like look, we talk about race, right? Racism absolutely exists. I'm not I'm not denying that. So does bigotry as well. You know, I'm not. I've met black people who fucking hate white people, hate Asian people, etc. But. Um, even that, right? So the concept of race, oh, well, if you're white, you're in a more privileged position, you're getting a better life, you generally are treated better, you can get away with more things. Yes, that is true. But also, that's to fool white people into thinking that we're in some elevated position. That's so the, the buttfuck nowhere hillbilly who, you know, plays a banjo can go, oh, man, well, at least I ain't no black dude, you know what I mean? I got my rights, I got this. But it's like, motherfucker, you're a slave too. We are all slaves. We're all in servitude. Even millionaires, the concept of being a multi-millionaire, oh, I have money. You don't really. What do you really own? You own your house? Okay, great. You still have to pay service charges every month You know, unless you own the land. And even then, you've got to pay to the government service charges. It's fucking lunacy. And I think this is why so many people are going back to that concept or being drawn to the concept of getting off grids, digging a fucking well, putting some solar panels in, and living a much more autonomous lifestyle uh, where you actually do feel like you have some control over yourself. And I'm envious of these guys in the middle of nowhere living on these compounds. I'll, I'll do that one day. Just, you will. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Community living. Yeah, you know? I, I'm, I'm, listen, all things I never formally thought about am now entertaining. Yeah, you know, 100%. Which yeah. is sad. Because yeah. I didn't really want to entertain these thoughts, you know, conspiracy theories, that kind of stuff. But it's not even conspiracy theories. You look at the look, financial industry. Macro level, it's a Ponzi scheme that we all buy into. That's, that's really is what it is. You know, the people at the top are benefiting immensely and uh, lead us even in the markets. That's why there's so much insider trading and people, they're all friends. They all went to fucking college together and they no, go and hang I out mean, in clubs. You look you know? at all the Congress Politics. people that get 86% return on their investments, their Wall Street investments insane. and stuff like that. It's, it's insane. Uh, but we I, can do it too. I, if you I, exploit the system that's already laid out, the loopholes are there, and you can exploit it, and you can make that money. You know, I agree. But then you start thinking about like, why is Bill Gates buying so much farmland? Oh, he's like, bought all the seeds as well. He owns patents for pretty much all the seeds in America. He owns all the like, what, you know what I mean? Like to what own is, food. If you I, own food, I, that's I the most get it. And and so he would give you an answer. But why? What is really going on? What does Bill Gates need s- seeds and farmland? Like why is he? Canada's talking, getting a farm. The Netherlands is trying to, you know, shut down food, farming man. and yeah. food. And it's like, is this for what? And what is the end game? I'm for- more concerned about all these wealthy people. And by the way, Bill Gates is not the top of the top. I'm talking like BlackRock, Vanguard. You yeah, know, these yeah. people that own everything. Those mm-hmm. people. But uh, yeah, Gates has literally gone. How do I put myself aside? Um, a little piece of this future that may or may not exist, depending on what goes on with the the world in the next few years or in the next few decades. Yeah, if, if he you hear knows that software isn't going to be it. Software right. is not how you control people, or own people. Food. If you own food, you're powerful. You've got right. some real power. Right. Bless you. Thank but um, yeah, I mean, I I was at uh, RFK Junior uh, event. What do you week. think of independence? How do you like the? How do you how do you like them for? Because I just found out that there's going to be another one soon. I bet not announce it just yet. It's quiet, I think. But another independent? There, there will be another independent coming soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the other day he told me, but I, 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 he asked me not to pass it on, so <laughs> <laughs> I won't say who. But it will be announced soon enough. Wow, it's going to be announced soon um, enough. Yeah, it'll be someone you know as well. RFK's on tomorrow, by the way. Hey, RFK will be on this show tomorrow. Amazing. What do you um, think of them? I'm always a fan of competition, Me and too. I always think it just brings out monopolies. I, I, I don't. I, I always want competition, and I, I want competition at every level. Like, LA Unified School District doesn't really have competition, so it's like bloated, and we spend a lot per student, and we don't get the outcome we want. I want somebody else compete. I want everyone competing with everyone all sure. the time, and I'm not even. Just for the consumer, but it brings out the best in in all entities. 
You know, it, it just, you know, the reason the Super Bowl is the Super Bowl is because there's just so much competition and um, so much parody. Everyone is so good and everything is so close. And, you know, you know. so I'm, I'm a big fan of competition. So I like the third party in, in, in service of the competition because I, I think there can be a tacit agreement with two parties, you know, right. you can basically yes. just go, it, you can be, you can be a situation where you go, you're There's barely a, any difference in the right. bipartisan. You're policies, a heavyweight so, you know. boxer. I'm a heavyweight boxer. I can say to you like, well, listen, you don't want to really fucking break your nose, your orbital socket. Like, do you know, but we want to get paid. So let's just put on a sure. show and give people what they want. And then we can just go out and have a beer after the fight. You know, I want a third party of a guy going, I'm going to beat the shit out of both of you. You better start. Training. So you've been watching influencer now. boxing then, have you? No, but that's that's basically what's going on. The Logan Pauls and Jake Pauls of the world, you know, it's like, oh, really? Yeah, all these MMA fires, retired MMA fires, boxing Jake Paul, and you know the whole. Uh, it's I just, have seen that. Yeah. yeah. So I want I want competition. Okay. And uh, I like RFK Jr. because he's talking he's talking about a lot of stuff that, and he's talking about BlackRock, and he's talking about all these huge yeah. conglomerations buying up houses, buying up land. You know, not only getting rich off the war, but getting rich after the war when they get all the contracts to come in and rebuild the place that they bombed, Absolutely. you know, then, and, and he's talking about a lot of stuff that nobody really talks about. And, uh, for that reason, I like it. Yeah. And, Would uh, you vote for him? Yeah. yeah. I want, I want everybody's, I want every, I'm doing a benefit for them next week. Okay. So you're uh, actually a supporter. Yeah. yeah. Wednesday. You know, I, it's kind of a weird thing. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, am I a supporter? It's like, I, I like him. Uh, I like his wife, Cheryl. I've, I've listened to what he's had to say. I understand. I don't like it when they try to, you know, shoehorn people into, he's a he's a vax denier and, you know, nutty. I, I can't stand the nutty cuckoo stuff. They try to, they try to hang on him. And... I, I'm a supporter. Like I, I feel like I'm a supporter of anybody who is making sense, wants to make change, has some cogent ideas, and is sort of factual and kind of brings the receipts. Like I'm, I'm the supporter of all with ideas that make sense, right. and, and and that really the the former system doesn't doesn't have a lot of that. In I agree. It. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he'll be on the show tomorrow and then I'll yeah, Monday I'll, actually. Sorry. Go sorry. Ahead. Monday. And then I'll, I'll go do his benefit on Wednesday. Yes. I think. Which who else is on it? Do you know to. who else is performing at the benefit? Is it like a, uh, yeah, I think, uh, Tim, please tell me flavor flavors. Doing it. Tim Dillon is doing, it's all stand up. I think oh, I see. Tim Dillon's on it. I love Tim. He's yes. hilarious. I think, um, Oh God! Well, Cheryl's well, hosting it. Cheryl's hosting it. Cheryl Hines, uh, Rob Schneider's on yeah, it. I'll get you the lineup in a second. Um, and um, I'm trying to think. Um, oh well, you'll you'll spit it out, and then we'll know. But yeah, uh, Tim Dillon, me, Rob Schneider. Okay, got it. Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a great lineup. That's going to be a good, good, good event. Yeah, I happen to have some Trump jokes and some Biden jokes already, so I'm <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm good to go. All right, let's take a break, and uh, we will uh, come back. We'll do some news. Jeff Leach will hang out. We'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about Morgan & Morgan. It's 2024, so let's talk about something important. If you get hurt this year, your injury could be worth millions of dollars. If you're injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide, and more than 1,000 lawyers, more than $20 billion recovered for 500,000-plus clients. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you your full and fair compensation. They've been fighting for the people for over 35 years Racing my vintage cars, eh, that can be a little hard, or at least I make it look hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is super easy. It's Morgan & Morgan. Am I right, Dawson? If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R-ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. 
Love takes over every fucking thought. You have to consider that person and all the big decisions in your life. You have to think about how they'll feel all the time. It takes over every part of you. Happiness is me when I was single before I met my fiance. <laughs> Going to a warehouse rave on a Tuesday. <laughs> Taking my body weight in ecstasy, madam. <laughs> all the ecstasy. Hitting that dance floor, just fucking. <laughs> Meeting a gorgeous girl on the dance floor. Our minds, our bodies connect the drugs, the music, the euphoria. And then at the end of the night, 6 a.m., when the club is closing, the sun is rising, like a gentleman, I take that beautiful girl back to her doorstep. And there, romantically, for the first time. <laughs> Blow cocaine in her arsehole. Jeff Leach on the Adam Carolla Show. All right, we got news. Jeff yeah. Leach is checking on his dog, making sure he's not getting into things. I just put a little leash on her so she doesn't run around your workshop. All right. I'm so curious of who who's going to run. Yeah. Who, who's going to run? Independent, oh, independent, independent is. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you after the show. But yeah, I just promised that I would keep it quiet. So I, I, I just I realized Can that. Can I do one guess? Can I have one guess? Sure, yeah. Because I know you know RuPaul. Would it be RuPaul? No, it's not RuPaul. Although that would be amazing. He's I'd love to see RuPaul. RuPaul. I'd fucking kill myself. <laughs> we were, oh. we were, um, we were friends. We haven't been friends for a long time. Oh, really? You're falling out? Yeah. Now, no, we didn't have a falling out. I just think, um, uh, I don't know. It was either um, he wasn't interested in hanging out with me, which could be it, or maybe his initial interest in hanging out with me was he wanted to fuck me, and then realized I was straight and that I wasn't oh. interested in that. But that's probably my ego speaking. I think he just didn't want to hang out anymore. <laughs> I don't feel like, like he needs 57 Emmy nods. Yeah, he also doesn't need um, any new friends. That's probably yeah. what it is. He's mm. got enough friends. He's probably happy. His Emmys can keep yeah. him friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just lines them all up in his front front room and has parties with them. Yes. All right, what so, do you got? Uh, some more, more Super Emmy Bowl nominees. stuff. So uh, Brandon Marshall, who we've talked to on a few of the uh, mm -hmm. podcasts. So he... He was uh, doing an interview, and he's telling a story. Wait, X wide out? Yeah. For the Bears? Yeah. He, he wore right. the green cleats. Yeah, yeah. Set yeah. the table, though. Yeah, because okay. it's not I'm not a household. Ex-NFL star Brandon Marshall. Yes. Uh, so he uh, he was doing an interview, and he's talking about he, how he saw Kanye at the Super Bowl. Mm. And he says Kanye pulled up to Vegas, buys a ticket right in front of Taylor Swift's booth. Mm. And then he says that Taylor got upset. She makes a couple calls. Um, he gets kicked out of the stadium. Wow. Because he was trying to leverage her celebrity. So he came in like in a mask with his logo on it. So every time they cut to Taylor, mm. he would be in the shot. Uh-huh. And she don't, and suppose, this is a corner brand. It's supposed to she didn't want that, and she got him kicked out. You can buy that game day at the... A spot in front of Taylor's booth. That's how much money you got, game? probably. Uh, yeah. buy he he bought a Super Bowl commercial. You could probably buy that game. Oh, day. so you buy you someone else bought the ticket though a year ago or something, right, and sure. you you buy it off that person. Yeah, right. or, or maybe it came with the commercial. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You drop ten mil or whatever it is on the commercial. Oh, maybe Did we you give see you a little seat. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Was yeah. it kind terrible? Of crazy. Was it great? Yeah. He filmed it all. It looks like he just filmed it on a cell phone, like a selfie mode. In the like back of a Uber. Yeah, I'll play a little bit of it if you if you want to see it. It was kind it. of crazy. Yeah. Wait, this is... And it's my commercial. And since we spent all the money on the commercial spot, we actually didn't spend any money on the actual commercial. It just goes on for 30 seconds. He says, like, go to my website. I got shoes. I, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I got shoes. That's what he says. Crazy, yeah, but he's crazy. He but is, maybe he's just a provocateur. Maybe we're all just. Yeah. I mean, we're talking it. about it. That's it what I'm that saying. That actually didn't air in L.A. though. He he just bought it regionally, so he didn't spend the full seven million on that. Where did he air spot. it? Um, it's unclear everywhere it aired, but Miami's definitely one of the places. Oh, that's I crazy. didn't see it. Yeah, that's why I thought. That's why we didn't see it. Yeah, that's why we didn't see it. Oh, okay, you but, regional stuff. Right, right. So um, a couple things. So Taylor was actually. Uh, they counted every second she was on the screen during the Super Bowl, 54 seconds. Mm -hmm. It was the most watched telecast in history, the Super Bowl. Yes, yeah. And was that the Taylor effect? Uh, it was up 10% from last year's Super Bowl. It was 123.4 million average viewers across all platforms. It's, I, probably, it's pretty I her, think, isn't it? I, I, listen, I, <laughs> here's my theory. My theory is as... We argue over sort of meritocracy. The true meritocracies get more enticing. 
right. to the people. So we have to sit around in society where we go, Kamala Harris, is she there because she's good or is she just because she's a black woman? Right. And then we just ran into it with the president of Harvard and now all this DI talk and people are going, are these all just affirmative action hires? And the Oscars have been polluted by it. All the award shows have been polluted by it where you go, are they, is this really the best film of the year or is it because it had the first Asian female sure, director sure, or whatever sure. and they've polluted everything. And so we're, we, everything is brought into question. But the pure meritocracies, and that is the Super Bowl and the heavyweight MMA fight and all this stuff, that's pure. Nobody questions it. And it, and, and now it becomes rarer and it becomes more attractive. And, yeah. I, and I don't think people understand why they're attracted to it, but they're attracted. When you see those two heavyweight MMA guys get in the ring or in the octagon, nobody questions who his dad is, or is that guy there just because he's black and they wanted him? They don't, oh, they go, these are the two best. Sure. That, that's it. And that's what we want, but we don't really articulate it, but that's what we want. Mm. And that's why the Academy Awards and all the award shows are going to be, continue to be on the decline. And, and prestigious colleges and stuff are going to be on the decline. And the Super Bowl just keeps moving up. Right. But then, you know, alongside that in parallel, Taylor Swift is the most fucking basically talented person in Hollywood in so many ways. What do you mean? I mean, her voice is fucking average. She can't dance for shit. Yeah. She looks like every white woman I've ever seen in my entire life. If I had to draw a, an average white woman, I'd draw Taylor Swift. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think there's any redeeming qualities about her. What she is, though, is a great businesswoman who had amazing financial funding from her family to get into the industry. Oh, really? Just like Dua Lipa. Same as Dua Lipa. Really? Well, yeah, because her dad bought like a million... Uh, copies of her first album. That's how Dua Taylor Lipa Swift. Did? No, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Oh, That's well, how sorry, career but you switched to do a leap. How did, yeah, yeah, uh, how did Dua Lipa, Lipa's parents? Help same her? thing. Okay, well, they same bought thing. a million her, copies. Her too? father bought like yeah to push her into the charts into oh, the top well, top, top of the charts. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's like it's it's like dog shit. I hate seeing someone like that get so much attention because I know there's a million other more talented artists out there who don't get a, don't get a, a fair whack. Right. Yeah, we have to get used to that. But that's Hollywood. That is Hollywood. You've been in this business long enough to know the nepotism is rife throughout this. You know, it's people's families, parents, this, that, and the other. You know, it's 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 not what you know; it's who you know. I don't know. I don't know purely about the nepotism part, but look at any of the major Hollywood A-listers who are working in Hollywood in major movies and films. All of them are either their uncle, their auntie, their father, their their brother they're all of them are related to someone who has already bef gone before with major success and then has brought them into the fold that's how it works like tom cruise like, is a fa famous something well, tom cruise i don't know tom cruise tom um, there's Hanks? gonna be there's gonna be some exceptions to the rule also you're talking about um actors who are up, getting up there in age you know they're in their 50s 60s mm -hmm. i'm talking about the the, the, the the yeah anyone in their 20s 30s 40s currently working at a high level the majority of them are, you know, oh, so and so's son or so and so's daughter or so and so's cousin or niece. Even ones you don't even know about, you find out. Oh, they're like, look, look at Nicolas Cage. It, isn't his fucking his his uncle he's a fronts his fire? He's a Coppola. You know, yeah. it's like there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, to be fair to Cage, though, he changed his name to Cage, to get away not, from it. Yeah. not to be a Coppola. Yeah, but he fucking did all right. <laughs> no, listen, I, like, <laughs> listen, I don't, I'm not as uh, dour about it or as sure about it as you are. I think I think it, it exists, but it exists in the furniture industry as well. Sure, like, I yeah. Just, I just think it exists, I but I think when you were talking, the first people that left in my head was like Tom Cruise and Tom mm. Hanks. I was yeah. thinking like, they're you older. Bit, you love a bit of action. No, but those are older guys. Those yeah, are older guys. Yeah, and I'm doing. trying to think who the newer guys like um, Timothy with two fucking Timothy e's. Chalamet. Ugh, two yeah, e's. Timothy Chalamet. Let's see if he's got any famous people in the industry. They pop one or two in every 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 few years. They pop a couple of like but, unknowns, and they go, "Look, we've this unknown actor, Tom Holland. Tom Holland was a great example. Tom Holland, and he's very talented. Like I like Tom Holland. He's Good at what he does. He's a good actor. He's done great. He's worked yeah. on his body. Ooh, blah blah blah. Well, congratulations. 
But his, um, you know, but his dad is still Dominic Holland, who's an established TV personality in the UK. His agent, he got his agent through, you know, his father's relationship. Jack Whitehall, another, you know, another comedian. He's uh, who seemingly out of nowhere, but then you find out his father was a massive agent, and you know, it's yeah, there's a lot of nepotism, man. It's it's hard. I think it's hard to break through as just a person who's good at their their art because to really get ahead. In TV in the UK, certainly, to get ahead, you either had to know the right person, so you had to be in those rooms, which these people grow up in those rooms, or you had to do coke in a bathroom with someone, and you can't do that shit anymore. In the mm. 90s and early 2000s, if you did coke with a TV producer at a party, they went, you know what? I like you. I'm going to get you on my TV show. I wonder if there's more nepotism in the UK than there is here. Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> more here? Yo, just, I mean, they could pull it up. If they go, like, who famous relationships, parents, kids of famous, you know, Hollywood A-listers who have famous parents, it'll be, I imagine, 90% of the top, yeah. 1,000 working actors I'll in Hollywood. You, I'll read you a few of them. Zoe Kravitz, Dakota Johnson, Maude Apatow, uh, Haley Bieber. But like Maude, I don't know how wildly successful Maude Apatow is. Oh, she's, That's what yeah, I'm she's saying. blown she's up. Huge. Yeah, she's blown up. She she's, sits courtside at Knicks games. Like yeah, she, she's been in all of his movies. And now no, I know she the, does all his movies, but is she... No, she was in, uh, what's that that mo- that show on, uh, on uh, HBO with Zendaya? Yeah. That I forgot that. I don't know the name of it, but uh, yeah. Euphoria, right? Euphoria, yeah. She was, yeah. She was, I just don't, I don't know if most people would know that name. Mm. That's all. But okay. anyway. Anyway, yeah. Blowing so, up. I mean, look, Taylor's just so, so big that uh, it was revealed that Travis Kelsey, when he moved last year, remember he moved to a new mansion, it was because fans were camping out in front of his house. Mm. And then when he moved to this new gated community, the first day, somebody's knocking on his back window. I don't have any beef with Taylor Swift. Um, uh, nepotism, I mean, that's how nepotism works. Or not, sorry, how nepotism works. I, I don't know that nepo- nepotism is a dirty word, it, per se. It's not a dirty word. It's, I, I know it's, it's what Hollywood is. It's just like, it's either that or money. Well, or there's, a bunch, the right dick. There's, a, there's a whole bunch of people who are trying to do a job that a lot of people could do. Right. And that's going to create something already. Sure. So... There's a whole bunch of people that want to play shortstop for the New York Yankees, but mm. there's only two guys who can really do it or five guys. You know what I mean? So this is a this is a weird situation where acting is could be this guy. I mean, you always do that. You can go back and you go, oh, um, the the uh, Indiana Jones was supposed to be played by Tom Selleck. You know, they always do that. This guy was supposed to play that role. That guy was supposed to play. It's a anyone can do it kind of job for the most part until you get into this really rarefied air of really seriously talented actors, you sure, know. But right. by, but it, other than that, it's your age, your look, and you know anyone can do it. So you're going to have a bunch of people wanting to do a bunch of jobs that almost anyone can do, and that's where nepotism kicks in. Their dad's going to. But I realize as a as a dad, I have a 17 year old son. He likes sports. He likes sports talk. He does his podcast, so on and so forth. And then I find myself sitting around because uh, I watch football with a guy who works for a Colin Cowherd show. He's a popular sports guy. So then I like find myself saying to Scott, like, hey, Scott, you work for Cowherd? Yeah. You know, my, my son's into sports and he wants to do broadcast. Can he come in and an production. intern and blah, 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 yeah. Yeah, can he come in and intern and check it out or whatever? You know, and then he goes, yeah, yeah, I think we can whatever. And I realize I've now inserted myself. I'm now part of the problem. I'm now part of the or the problem. But when I was uh, 19 and rudderless, my mom knew a guy who was a merchant marine named Bill, and uh, I had no job and no place to go, or whatever. And and I said to my mom, can you say, ask Bill if he could help me get in and be a merchant Marine? Like most of the guys, most of the guys, you know, I was a carpenter. I got 14 bucks an hour, but the guys who worked for the studios, they got like 34 bucks an hour in full benefits, you know? And it was always like, do you know a guy over there that can get me in to be, I didn't know anybody and it, it never worked. But the, the point is, is, that's going on on a sort of micro, macro, 100%. big and small. That's going on on multi-million dollar contracts, and it's going on for merchant marines. You're correct. Too, yeah. and everyone who makes the whatever, the longshoremen union, you know, that that's just the nature of the human experience. So I don't, 
I, I don't really dissect it that much because it sort of is, and I don't know what we're going to get away from it. Sure. Yeah. No, I don't, don't disagree with any of that. And Taylor Swift is, you know, pretty generic, and, and I agree with you on most She's of a good what songwriter, she says. Actually. Yeah, I'll say that. She, she, writes, she, writes, she writes very, uh, she, very good But she songs. writes good songs. Yeah. She's prolific, and she has a work ethic. So, and so yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, you can – you know, Daddy can give you the job in the corner office, but he can't motivate you to show up weekends and, no, you're and get to work right. in. And you're any, right. anyone who burns calories, I'll give them their due. Although Did you like? I mean, works. you like talking about race. Did you like her her diversity hire for her friendship group of having Ice Spice? At the, <laughs> it, that was hilarious. All these like really white girls, the whitest white of white girls, pumpkin spice latte, <laughs> fucking crew, twenty twenty four, and then just Ice Spice in the middle of it. Like, what am I doing I here? here? Yeah. I, it is a little suspicious when people just start showing up who you've formerly never seen yeah, in the yeah. posse mm. before. So I'm going to be on TV. I better make myself appear a little more <laughs> yeah. diverse in my Kanye's friendship the group. Picture. She should have put Ice Spice <laughs> yeah. on her shoulders and been feeding her. You know, just had like a bag of snacks. Yeah. Like a kid. Yeah. Does Ice Spice have the fart song? Yes. All right, well. She knows what she's yeah. doing. She's singing about farts. We're talking about great songs. We're talking about sure. great yeah. song. Um, yeah. So speaking of Kanye, so Ozzy Osbourne was really upset with Kanye because, uh -huh. uh, um, and this is a tweet, I guess Kanye asked for permission to sample a section of a live performance of Iron Man from the U.S. Festival without vocals. Oh, wait, you're talking about the Us Festival? Oh, Us Festival, sorry. Well, it was refused. It's all caps. So. Yeah, I know. It's just called the Us Festival. Yeah, it was refused permission. This is how mad Ozzy is. He wrote it in all caps. He's yelling this, uh, this tweet. Was he didn't refused, write anything. Was refused permission because he is an anti-Semite and has caused untold heartache to many. I want no association with this man. That's because not he, technically what he said. What he actually said was, oh, yeah, uh, I, uh, I, I think Sharon typed that one out. <laughs> that, right. That's what I'm saying. Well, anyway, yeah, he's really upset with Kanye, but um, there's some good news for Ozzy. He is nominated for the 2024 induction of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh. He absolutely should be in there. I mean, come on. <coughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, I never really cared that much for Well, he's music, in with Sabbath. But... He's in with, with Sabbath, Sabbath, but, yeah. but yeah. Ozzy Osbourne has sold more records than Sabbath. Like, he should be in as a solo You artist. sound like you should be in Sabbath. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's a rock and roll voice right I there. I saw right? Ozzy. I saw Ozzy at his last, uh, what I knew was going to be his last concert in Los Angeles ever. Um, I believe it was at Staples. It could have been at the Forum. But um, Ozzy came out, and he was he was very unimpressed with the lackluster response from the audience in Los Angeles, which is which is what happens in L.A. You go right. to shows. Can I just say, I'm not... getting a half erection just listening to your fucking voice. I've never heard your voice before. This is... So Ozzy gets up on stage, and he's like... Los Angeles, what's wrong with you? Come on, make some noise and we're not going to play. All right, here's Iron Man. And I'm like, Ozzy, that's not how you do a threat. He literally said, <laughs> lit this, uh, in, in that exact time, he said, if you don't start making noise, we're not going to play. Two, three. All right, here's Iron Man. The song everyone came for. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was he on his feet the whole time, or did he? He was on his feet. Oh, okay. He was on his feet, but right. yeah, you could tell he was. It, it was over. Anyway, yeah. I'm sure Sharon tapped that thing out. On, on yeah, yeah. I mean, we, she mentioned it on this show. So mm -hmm. um, uh, about about him getting nominated. Excuse me. Yeah. So you want to hear some of the other nominees? Sure. Rock Mary, and Roll Hall of Fame. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mary J. Blige. Okay, not rock and roll, but okay. Mariah Carey. Not rock and roll, but okay. Cher. Definitely not rock and roll and pretty shitty songs. Dave Matthews Band. Rock and roll. I mean, sort of not rock and roll, but songs. Eric you know. B. and Rakim. Don't know who that is. That's hip hop a, duo. That's, I feel like that's a. What well, a rock and roll Hall of Fame isn't just exclusively show. rock and roll now music. It was, it? and then it got sort of bastardized. It'll get, it, gets, it gets better. Mm. Foreigner. All right, rock and roll. Peter Frampton. Rock and roll. Jane's Addiction. Rock and roll. Cool in the gang. Not rock and roll. And they got to celebrate their big song. I mean, yes. oh, oh, they they have celebrate, which I fucking hate, or it's, it's fucked out. I never want to hear it again. And then they have they have a slow song. Dawson can look at Cherish. Right. It's called Cherish. Oh, oh, cherish, cherish the love we had. Cherish, we cherish the love. Oh, oh no, they yeah. sing Get Down on it. Yeah, they shouldn't be let they shouldn't be let into an IKEA. 
much less the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Get Down On It is the worst fucking song ever written, which I've, I know I've announced about 26 songs on this podcast. But if you listen to Get Down On It, the part that angers me about Get Down On It, it goes, get down on it, get down on it, get down on it. And then it goes, get down on it. It's like, yeah, I need a lyric at some point. I know it's called Get Down uh, you know, Rolling Stones are great, but they went disco for a couple of songs and they heard it. The Who is great. The Who's the best. The Rolling Who's Stones the are best. still great. I went to see them a couple of years ago, and I mean, that man, he was like six months out of a uh, heart bypass surgery or whatever, and he was rocking and going sure. hard on stage. He was <sighs> jumping around. That's all he knew. Get, to the, get to the end of this song. Just, it's, it's like it's the done. last minute. No, it gets never over. It's never done. <laughs> Because they drew first blood. That's a one and a half minute song, Rod. We need another two minutes <laughs> on this. He's like, I'm just saying the passion. Yeah. Oh, that soap dispenser needs passion. The song was released in 80. <sighs> Jimmy Carter was the current president in 80. I don't know what Rod Stewart was doing there. Oh, was okay, the, I thought that was going to go. Yeah, it's come out. I thought that story had an it. You would think, but you would think. Songs for Rod Stewart. So wait, was but it, here's was the it, thing: was it you would Thatcher, think if he Thatcher says, in charge of England, if then. it's just a one-off in the studio, and it's like, okay, Rod, we're going to have your riff at the end of oh, this the song. President. Just sing about about passion, and the first thing he says was, "Even the president needs passion." You have to look at the president. Okay, why? Oh, okay. Why? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't read as into it as I don't, much. I don't. I think Reagan was president in eighty. Reagan got elected in eighty. Oh, when he and took office think, in eighty, he didn't take uh, office in eighty. So. And I mean, listen, if you say anything about Reagan, one thing you can say is he had a lot of passion. Passion. He did. See, for, see, Jimmy Carter needed some. I think he something. entered in eighty. I think. I think Reagan was the president. I, for well, this one song. of them needed passion. <laughs> All right. Okay. Either way, that's the worst um, song ever. Another, and then two yeah, more. So. Reagan took office in eighty one. Oh, it didn't take until 81. Yeah. All right, sorry, my bad. Uh, what do you think of Sade? Sade. 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 Uh, no Sade? one knows who Sade is, but oh, yeah. S-A-D-E, Sade. Sade. Sade is pronounced Sade. I don't even know. Oh, come on, man. Sade. Have you never on, had Mac sex? Japan. What the fuck is wrong with <laughs> you? I, I guess. Not, you don't I know Sade? No. Are you, you going to finger blast on for Valentine's Day? Oh, yeah. It's always, that's what Cupid has in mind. Nice. Yeah. On the uh, love right. hearts, uh, a tribe called Quest. So mm. awesome. love tribe called Quest. So there you all go. Right. You're not a fan. I, I love Eric B and Rakim as I well. Don't, actually, I don't. I don't. I like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay, and, you want and Rock and Roll? I You're think, a purist in all I forms. I think they Adam. should start a music Hall of Fame that it was an umbrella that covered music. Actually, but, there is a hip hop Hall of Fame as well, isn't it? Should put rock bands in there. Yeah, I'm saying if if there's a hip hop. Hall of Fame and Ted Nugent is trying to get in. I, they yeah. would say no, that's not our <laughs> format, and yeah. I would back them for yeah. that. That's yeah. what that's what I'm saying, and I don't I like you. that the rock and roll has gotten into Sade and and others and Cool and the Gang and stuff like that because it's not rock and roll. Right. So you. that's uh, that's it. But look, I like that In and Out Burger just sells. Burgers and fries. They don't do tamales. They don't do fiesta salads. Like they just do burgers and fries. That's fine. Yeah. And if you want a fiesta salad, then you can go across the street to the Chipotle and get right, a fiesta right, right, salad. Yeah, like yeah. this is the world I want to live in. And we're living you in like a world now segregated. Segregated. In its place. Yes. You yes. get your drinking fountain. You get your <laughs> drinking fountain. That's what I. That's the America I dream of. Uh, All right. What else well, is going on? Of, uh, <laughs> speaking of that. Um, there was a theft of a bronze Jackie Robinson statue that mm. was cut off at the ankles and found days later smoldering in a trash can in a city park in Kansas. They have caught the man. He's a 45-year-old man. So they cut this Jackie. So the, the only thing left are the shoes. Well, where does the word smoldering come in? Okay, so they, there's no evidence that this was a hate-motivated crime, but rather the intent was to sell the metal for scrap. Oh, wow. Oh, but when you say smoldering... What does that mean? Uh, I think they're trying to they're tr partially tr melt it melting down. it down in a trash can in a park. Yeah. Oh, so they were they Must were a metal heating, They were heating it up. They're heating a, it. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. So they cut the bronze statue from its base last month. Yeah. Um, and uh, there are about six hundred children who play in this youth baseball league by there. And, um, and not so, one of them thought to call the police when they watched this I, homeless I, I dude know, with a hacksaw trying insane. desperately well, to get through the ankles. So security camera says it was a crew that did it, but they only arrested one guy. Also, bronze is no joke. That's pretty heavy, bronze. Yeah. How well, the fuck did they do that? 
And what city was this in? It's in Can- it's City Park in Kansas. Oh, that's why. There's We're no one getting... there. No one lives in Kansas, do they? <laughs> no. Well, they did, but they moved here. They all got taken away by tornadoes to the land of Oz. <laughs> they okay. So here's a bad sign. <laughs> No, I will, I will explain signs and bad signs right. for, for communities, for countries, for cities. Um, you know, pickpockets and people stealing wallets and things of that nature. Right. That's uh, as is, is t- is old as the Bible. Sure. And that's fine. I mean, it involves it's, some training. And we don't, while we don't condone it, we just realize it exists. We respect it. It's a, we, we have to live with it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And then you get into certain other crimes where there's holdups or there's robberies or they rob banks and Cowards. stuff like that. And we kind of get that's a part of the fabric of, of living in a society. But then at a certain point, you get into these crimes that are more like carjackings and stuff like stealing that. Stealing people's sort of, carburetors off the yeah, bottom, yeah. Stealing people's catalytic, catalytic converters, converters and yeah, using yeah. the heavy metals in them and stuff pulling out copper wiring from conduit that runs along the side of houses, stealing Jackie Robinson's statue and yeah, smelting yeah. it in a trash can. And now we're getting into sort of a c- apocalyptic end of days shit. Yeah. We're getting into, we're like one step away from, well, these, these, we had a whole crew that was stealing the fillings out of corpses' teeth and mm-hmm. melting it down. Like we're getting into weird, desperate. Post Malone Bear watch Stealing out. garden yes. gnomes and selling them to old ladies. Yeah, there's a again. There's the run of the mill. Oh, the guy left his briefcase out, and somebody stole it. Or the porch pirate stuff. You know, sure, that's sure. just pickpocket, basic, and and also the kind of like you know kids going into stores and stealing candy and stuff. Just run of the mill stuff. Well, I'm to the honor amongst thieves. That's what we're saying. <laughs> and then you're getting into we're stealing basic elements: aluminum, copper, bronze, bronze yeah. and that speaks of a kind of now we're getting into thunderdome shit yeah, yeah, like yeah, we're yeah. getting into post-apocalyptic hellscape stuff yeah that's where we're heading and yeah. i would argue it's time to pump the brakes and take a look what okay. is really going you, on I mean, here how, how, what do you think's going on what's going on is lots of desperate people lots of drugs yeah that whenever whenever there's desperation think drugs sure right so lots of desperation means drug fueled. Uh, broken families help mm. help sort of till the soil for mm. the drug addicts and thus the desperate mm. moves. And then it's a mix. It's and a, poverty, obviously. And poverty, but poverty doesn't make you a thief. I know that's a common thing that you probably subscribe to, but it doesn't historically no, it, it make you in some a thief. Areas, yeah. Well. If you have stuff, you do less thievery. But but sure. it, you can still be a drug addict. You just don't steal Jackie Robinson statues. Yeah, you yeah, steal yeah. from your stepdad. But this guy was homeless, correct? Or was it? Or was he not? Was he just? We don't on the out and out, or was he homeless? I thought um, there was a group of homeless people. Because if I was homeless, I'd be like, well, I live outside the confines of the normal, normal I think common it, law. I think it's drug addicts. Well, yeah, yeah. 45, 45 years old, uh, jailed on a hundred fifty thousand dollar bond. Uh, he was also charged with identity theft and making false information in October of 2022 involving a pawn ticket. Oh, so he's a career criminal. So, and then it's mixed with cops pulling back and a sort of society sort of generally kind of looking the other way. And now we have this. And now you got to stare at Jackie Robinson's ankles. Right. Yeah, I think, know. I think like a radio tower was even stolen recently. <laughs> we will... Steal anything that's made of a metal that we can melt down, right. which, again, thing. bad sign. The gargoyles at the top of that building in New York City. <laughs> that's oh, right, the Chrysler. The Chrysler. Yeah, mm-hmm. so um, so they said that the to replace the statue, they still have the mold. Uh-huh. So they can replace it. It'll be about $50,000 to replace it. Why? If they got the mold, they've got the bronze. They just melt yeah. down the bronze and put it back in a mold. Make it out of the same bronze. Literally. Um, yeah. Well, um uh, their donations have been pouring in. They've already got over three hundred thousand dollars. See, I don't think it was it. anything to do with that guy. I don't think the guy stole it in the first place. That was just that they just put pinned it on him. It was just the the city wanted an extra three hundred k out of the uh, the poor residents of Kansas. If the guy was smart who got busted, he would have said Jackie Robinson was a slave owner, and that's why I took the statue <laughs> down. <laughs> and then everyone would have been all befuddled, and then he could have got on <laughs> with his life. Yeah. 
This was a political statement. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I was actually mm-hmm. going to melt it down, get the money, and then give it back to people as reparations. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Let that's me right. finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, so there's this new TikTok trend, and I just want to warn all the listeners out there that if your significant other asks you to retrieve a peeled orange, it is a trap. So mm. it's this new it's this new challenge where you want to see if um, like your boyfriend. Wait, you're saying retrieve a peeled orange, or like give you bring you a peeled orange? Well, would you, peel can, would you an grab orange me? Would you grab me, me an orange, Adam? And then you go, okay, sure. Peel, you go, actually, yeah. would you mind peeling it for me? So you just two you. steps. Yeah, two steps. First step is, but like you're not watching TV or you're yeah. doing something or what, whatever right, it is. Then like, will you peel it for me? Will you, yeah, will you give me a peeled orange and then they film you and then mm. depending on how you react, and there's a lot of guys that you know will do it. Instantly, and some don't, and it's uh, yeah, they're they're basing their relationship off this. Yeah, people know my hygiene habits and where my fingernails have been, and they don't want me anywhere near their orange. I mean, you've been fingering to Chardonnay. <laughs> we all know I that. Finger blasted right. to Chardonnay the entire afternoon, and you want me to peel your orange? You know, I don't. <laughs> You're use a mad man. You're a mad. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never ask for it while smooth operators playing. That's right. So I get myself out of that duty by just Easy. having hands that have never been washed that yeah. have transmission fluid on them and 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 the juice of of women in the cuticles yeah, built so in. So what is the what is the right answer to do it? Yeah, the, well, a lot of the guys who do who who are doing it, you know, they they're praised. Mm-hmm. While everyone just laughs or says that the other guys are, are dicks, mm-hmm. but yeah, they're basic. A lot, they do a lot of these relationship challenges where they secretly film you and ask you to do tasks. And if I'm sitting on the couch next to my partner, I don't have a partner. But if I were sitting on the couch next to a partner, and she went, "Do you mind getting me an orange?" and I was sat down with her, I'd go like, "I would say, well, why don't you go get yourself an orange? You got legs." <laughs> right. If I was up and in the kitchen, she went, "Yo, could you grab me an orange?" I'd be like, "Yeah, sure." Right. And if she went, "Do you want to peel it?" I go, "Is your what's wrong? Is your fingernails?" Do you have a cut on your fingers? What's what's the issue? I I think yeah, because the next iteration here is you feeding it to them. Yeah, I mean that's where this is going. See, I'd right? actually be, I'd be more likely to skip out the peeling part, but then the feeding part. Yeah, I'd feed it. I'd feed an orange to a woman. <laughs> I don't Gently see my feed some grapes to a. You know, I, I I do. I am amazed at. Um, I remember once, I can't remember what it was, but I was like sitting on my sofa and my daughter was like standing in the room in my Mm. office and she went like, can you go downstairs and go get the whatever? And I was like, your You're, daughter said that to you. Yeah, I go. You're wow. closer to it than than I am. I would have said, you "Can you pay mean? fucking rent?" <laughs> yeah, I I know, but the the point is, is there is a group of people that are sort of cool with. Can you get up and go get me the whatever? Sims. Which Sims. I, yes, and I find this insane. Yes, if you're in the kitchen, they're allowed to yell down the hall. Can you bring an orange Absolutely. when you come back? That's cool. If you're both sitting in the same spot. She's sitting there. She's got her knees tucked up and her shoes on the sofa. This is why you it. need to start beating your child, Adam. You're right. I'm going to do that. <laughs> and I, I love the idea that you would have waited 17 years to raise a hand. To your <laughs> and at the starting. ripe old age of 17, you go, right, today's the day. <laughs> today's the day. <laughs> Happy <laughs> Valentine's Day, bitch. <laughs> Bam. One of those. All right. Linda Hamilton is going to join us. You know her from everything, but probably most specifically Terminator and that whole franchise. Uh, Jeff, let me give you a plug. Thanks, man. I'm yeah. going to be in Vegas. If anyone's uh, into seeing some comedy, I'll be in Las Vegas doing a residency at the Comedy Cellar from March 11th to 25th. Um, but if you would like to check out my brand at new podcast. At the Rio podcast, Hotel, by the way. That's right, at the Rio Hotel. Because mm-hmm. Yeah, don't throw that in. I don't want people to know it's at the Rio. <laughs> comedy Cellar, beautiful venue inside the Rio. And uh, hey, Good enough for Penn and Teller. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. The, play, the, the venues are great. Um, the the ca- casino is being refurbished as we speak by Caesars. Um, but yeah, and also please check out my new podcast, Comic Cougar Convo, available uh, on YouTube and Patreon. You can get the episodes early, plus lots of behind-the-scenes footage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. Always good to see you, my friend. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate you, dude. We'll take a quick break. Linda Hamilton right after this. Z-Biotics, got a surefire way to wake up feeling fresh after a night of drinking Z-Biotics, pre-alcoholic probiotic drink. Oh, you don't think I brought one of these bad boys home for the Super Bowl? Oh, yes, I did. Because, uh, yeah, we start the uh, festivities early in the day, and, you know, that game went to OT, so uh, tilted a few, but I took my Z-Biotic before, and I felt great the next day. 
It's a genetically engineered probiotic invented by a PhD scientist for rough mornings after drinking. When you drink alcohol, it turns into a toxic byproduct in the gut. And uh, that's the blame for your rough next day, not dehydration. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down, and I'm here to tell you it works. Just remember to make Zbiotic your first drink of the night. And it, it tastes good. I mean, it tastes fine. Boom, right out of the vial, just shoot it down. Drink responsibly, and you'll feel your best tomorrow with Zbiotic. Am I right, Dawson? Go to zbiotics.com slash Corolla to get 15% off your first order when you use Corolla at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash Corolla and use the code Corolla at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode and our good times. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop. In the store, or do it online to receive points and get rewards sent straight to your phone or inbox. Get two, three, four, even five times bonus points on select purchases. Receive bonus points on select items throughout the store like wiper blades, antifreeze, coolant, parts cleaner, motor oil, and more. Those bonus points can help get you to your next rewards even faster. You'll receive a $5 reward for every 150 O reward points to use on your next in-store or online purchase. Members can check points and rewards online anytime. If you're already an O rewards member and not receiving your rewards, just add an email address or mobile phone number. Get a $10 reward for updating your existing account. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, signing up is easy, quick, and simple. Just do it online at O'ReillyAuto.com or in store at O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's time for Nicaraguan Name That Movie with Adam's buddy Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. I'll be back. If you said The Terminator, I'll be back. You're correct. Now, back to the show. Linda Hamilton has joined us. Resident Alien is the name of the production we're talking about here third season returns today as you hear this on sci-fi and uh linda memory serves is in new orleans right now this is where i live it's my happy place yeah i'm very curious i i do know people who have moved to new orleans and said uh they didn't stay they moved there they thought it'd be great but it seemed like more of a weekend place than an actual live there for years place. But tell us your impressions of New Orleans. Well, it's a, just very authentic. I live um, in the New Orleans parish, but across the river on the West Bank. So it's the only part that's kind of just a little bit away from the craziness. Um, great neighborhoods right on the Mississippi. I love it. I love my neighbors. I didn't know how much I needed neighbors till I moved here. Mardi Gras was yesterday. Love it. Oh, Mardi Gras was yesterday. Mardi oh Gras God. was yesterday. Do you get anywhere near that? No, <laughs> I don't. I don't. You know, you're built for that or you're not, but it's just too much for me. Were you ever built for it? Uh, mm, yeah, in my young drinking days, probably, I would have thought that was fun. I mean, I love the costumes. I love the joy that it brings all the people that I know that just truly love it. But I don't need to be in the midst of a parade, you know, <laughs> now. Was, uh, what was the original plan for you? other than being employed actress, like when you started out, 
did you ever imagine being involved with such a massive franchise as Terminator? Did you think you were going to do small indie films and maybe play the best friend of the star who was in the movie or whatever? Like, what was what was sort of what or was there a plan, a vision? When I was uh, when I came to Hollywood, it was 1979. So we didn't. I don't think anybody planned a career in those days or really even understood that a career could take a certain trajectory like, like mine did with, you know, one action picture. So, no, I never saw it coming. Certainly never thought I'm going to be known as, you know, people will meet me on the street and they go, I was just telling my daughter, you see that woman over there? She's a badass. <laughs> it's not even that I'm an actress or, you know, it's like that woman over there, you see her? She's a badass. So that's not that's not what I was thinking when I was at school at Strasburg, you know, in New York. Is it a is it a blessing? Is it a curse? Is it something in between? Would you wish it upon a friend? Um, yeah, I, um, I think it's gone exactly the way it was meant to go. It's just that I, I had no idea that that was going to happen that way, but no, I, I've been thrilled. I'm thrilled with my life and the fact that I'm still acting and, you know, it's like, you feel a little fraudulent saying, no, I was just playing a strong person, but in time, you grow into the strength, I think. And, uh, you know, I I have a lot of proud moments. And I've had a fantastic time acting. So there's nothing else you can ask for, right? Is to just love every day on the job. And that's how I am when I'm acting. Well, it, I mean, it's such a, it's such rarefied air just to be employed in this business. And to, I... I have to do it myself every once in a while. I have to just sort of lay in bed and go, you get paid for your ideas and not for how fast you can frame a guest bedroom or right. how, how many shingles you can hang on a roof. And that's just a, <clears throat> that's a blessing. Uh, and then the rest of, I think sometimes, I feel like if you make your living as an actor or a comedian or a writer or poet or painter, just something creative. If you go, I make a good living doing this creative endeavor, you've covered about 99% of the challenge, but sometimes you stare at the 1% and you go, why am I not doing what that 1% is doing? And you realize the joke's kind of on you. You've covered the, the most difficult part you've done. Yes, but... I don't know. I, I actually have true kind of awareness and gratitude um, at, you know, these later, later years of my life. I just I'm I'm just solid and steady and happy and grateful. I know how, you know, I just know how lucky I am to get to keep doing it. We were talking last time. I'm having these little flashes of thoughts from our last <laughs> conversation. We're talking about eating. And I remember that there's something surrounding eating that I thought was different with you. I don't don't eat a lot. Long periods of like time without eating. Yeah. And then there was a relationship aspect of it too, which may have been sort of like eating maybe long periods of time in between relationships, but I don't know if that's correct. Oh, or not. you mean just out and out celibacy over here. Yeah. You can't well, remember that? I do kind of remember that. <laughs> But yeah, it's just not the great topic of conversation, is it? <laughs> I, I don't know. I find it sort of fascinating. Maybe it falls, maybe it's connected. So what was the eating? What was the eating part that I was forgetting about? Um, nothing particularly, except I can't really have like this. I, I, because of the work that I do, too. I mean, 18 months will go by where I'm not eating carbs where it's just meat and vegetable and no fruit. And I don't like meat or vegetable particularly. So I guess there is a disengagement, right? You just have to kind of go, well, you know, I don't, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to food. So, period. but you're, you're on that diet. I mean, the sort of low carb, no carb. Uh, I'm not really on a diet. I, uh, I'm pretty sensible about my approach to food, but 
I don't know. It's um, I'm kind of hard to describe because I just don't go there. I don't care about going out to dinner. So if I am invited to go, I'll say no and I'll stay home and eat the, you know, the rest of the grapes and the uh, <laughs> the stale Doritos. Right. I mean, I just don't work hard for food. I, I it, it is a blessing. I don't know if it sounds like a blessing, but I really spend, I feel like the majority of my waking hours thinking about what do I want to eat tonight? Where are we going to go to dinner? I'm in the mood for sushi. Like I have these thoughts and I know a lot of people that have they these do. thoughts. I, I think that I am unusual in that. I'm just, you know, free. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if there's a connection if, if that bleeds over into any other aspects of your life or there's some connection, like um, I think about guys that are constantly looking at women and they have an obsession with women and they have a lust, like a, a carnal lust, you know, and inevitably they get into trouble because something happens when they're on the road, they get busted, they destroy their family and what have you. And we all look at them and go, hey, knock it off. But I don't know if they can knock it off. That's what they're, that's their, that's their hunger. You know, you know what I mean? And, yes. and I know people have it with food. And I, I oftentimes think, I guess I'm blessed that when I go out of town, I don't want to screw strangers. <laughs> because it would be disruptive. The, the lesser of, e of all the evils. Just... Yeah. But and I'm, I'm. But I'm wondering, are you in general like kind of a low key person? Like, yes. And, and do you not feel like you have this joie de vivre, you know, this lust for life? Like, how does it manifest itself? I, I do have that lust for life. Um, and it, and have spent my life being too much for everybody, right? Bipolar, very manic or very depressed. I was like the greatest person in the room or I was the most tragic person in the room. You know, not uh, not pretty <laughs> in my youth. Uh, so yes, appetites. And if I was sad, everyone in the room, I didn't know I was sad. I mean, it was just too effing much. <laughs> So, yes, I do know what it's like to swing back and forth. I've had alcohol and drug issues. So, yeah, I've had my appetites, but uh, they're very much just sort of integrated and I don't give them much attention or don't give them any power. I just sort of go, oh, you calm down, down in front, right? You, you kind of learn to... Uh, if I get really, really attached to something like I used to be unhappy, this is ridiculous. I'm like sounding like some sort of Zen priestess, but yeah. I would find that I mean, love my coffee. I still smoke my cigarettes. So I got my things, but uh, I'm unhappy if I don't have milk in my for, for my coffee in the morning. And so I gave up having milk in my coffee. I taught myself to drink it black. So my happiness is not contingent upon having milk for my coffee. Did, um, <laughs> I, and do you do sort of meditation, saunas, you know, walks, no. you know, is there, is there overt, I do walk. overt attempts I, at sanity? Uh, walking, I think, is one of my great treasured moments every day. Because I live in a neighborhood that's really interesting. A lot of, you know, just flourish flourishes beautiful victorian houses and you know it's subtropical so things grow fast and i'm very much in touch with the birds and their songs and the flowers and the people it's really very uninteresting to anyone but me <laughs> i got a tip for possibly you but maybe people listening as well i i was doing a lot of walking myself but finding I wasn't getting, you know, I was just walking. I wasn't really getting a workout per se. I was just right. doing like a lot of walking. And then somebody said, you should do a weighted vest. Mm -hmm. And I got a 20 pound weighted vest. 
and I'm sure they come in 5, 10, 20, 25, whatever. But I said, all right, I'll, I'll start with this 20-pound weighted vest. And then it made walking into something different than just walking, yes. you know. And then yeah. you take the 20-pound vest and you now involve a hill, <laughs> like, a, like an incline, and walking the incline. And I love it because I used to go out and walk around for an hour and then I'd come home and I'd go, I guess I better do some exercise now. I would do something that's a little more vigorous than strolling about. Uh, pop on that, that vest. Yeah. Um, you'll walk at the same pace. It's fine. It kind of keeps your posture back, kind of pulls your shoulders back a little bit. Um, and you'll get, you'll get the work in. And then it, and basically you'll forget about it at a certain point. It'll just feel like you walking around. So anyone listening, uh, you can get these things. I don't know. They don't cost anything. And uh, just keep it by your door and pop it on before you before you take your hike. Uh, I do know, I do feel like I'm going to meet my demise with it, like I'm going <laughs> to fall into a body of water <laughs> or I'm going to get chased by gangbangers and not be able to flee. But then <laughs> I started thinking enough. about a scenario where somebody shot me, but it was absorbed uh. by the sand in it. I, I came with a lot of different <laughs> hypotheticals about the weight vest. But uh, yeah, the weight vest, I'll, I'll, you, yeah. I'll put that out to you and anyone listening. Cheap, easy, and it can turn that walk into just a little more of a, of a workout. Makes sense. Um, so you left Hollywood. I mean, you were you were knee deep in Hollywood for a while. Obviously, James Cameron. You guys were married for a uh -huh. while. There's no. I mean, he kind of. I guess he kind of, in in a way, is very much about Hollywood, but but also seems to be a maverick and an independent and sort of an explorer and stuff like that as, as well. All of that. And he's not in Hollywood anymore. He's in New Zealand. Oh, he lives in New Zealand. Lives in New Zealand. And so, how would you describe him? He's a really, really nice guy. There you go. <laughs> Diplomatic. And... I, I mean, I have a ton of respect for him. I've never spoken to him. I don't know what his politics are. Like, I, I don't, re I don't hear him on the, you know, circuit that often. It seems to me if he's out exploring the oceans, that there's something going on with him that's more substantial than your average director, oh, yeah. writer. Oh yeah, he has a fantastic brain and a fantastic curiosity, and that you know that explores just desire to go as high as possible and as deep as possible into the, you know, into everything. He would, he would spend his, you know, off time trying to vertically land helicopters. I right. mean, planes, working on vertical landing vertical. planes. You know, he's just got a physicist and all kinds of explorers inside of him. Is it hard being with somebody who can't just sort of chillax, you know, like we're just going to watch, you know, Real Housewives of Orange County and crack a beer and just, you know, kind of peel an orange. veg out a little, yeah. peel an orange for he could, me? He could do that, too, but it was just for a very little restricted period of time, you know. Um, yeah, you take somebody like that to the to, – well, I used to live on Point Doom, and we would go to the point to look for – whales and uh because they they migrate there every year and jim would go well no whales and <laughs> and start to head back home it's like but dude we're on the beach like we're <laughs> on the beach here let's just take a minute <laughs> you know mission oriented <laughs> yeah that point doom that place is picturesque and gorgeous secret isn't it it's beautiful. I mean, don't try to park anywhere near it. You're definitely getting a ticket. But if you can walk there from your house, the and I used to live out on Point Doom, and it's just, it's, it's, it's perhaps as nice as California gets in terms of being, being out there. I think so, too. I've run that hill up and down so many times, you know, from the highway, just for my pull down run was going up that hill. <laughs> Yeah, you really got fit for Terminator and really probably made a difference. And I don't I don't mean a difference. I just mean 
influenced a lot of women. Totally. I, I think women were focused on sort of a Jane Fonda kind of esque physique of you know stay trim, stay firm, toned. You know what I mean? But you, not veins in the arms and striated and sort of jacked and, and ripped. You may have ushered that one in. Yeah, only because I kept my hair long. Do you know? I mean, Jim had written that she chops her hair in the bathroom when she's getting ready to break out of the mental institution. Mm. And I think if I had done that, I don't know, I think the world was ready for a feminine, a feminized you know, a strong woman, but still feminine, you yeah. know, realizing that they could be strong and feminine. So I think I dodged a bullet there by not chopping my hair off. Did you have to argue with him about that? Not really. Not really. And I imagine that he would argue harder today. But uh, I just said, let's throw it back in a ponytail. I don't remember there being any argument. Was the um, who's. Whose thought was it to get in that kind of physical shape? Linda Hamilton. So you did that. I yeah, mean, it was your idea. Because I, I also had asked him to make her crazy. You know, when he said we're going to do another one, he hadn't written it yet. And I was pregnant with my first child. So, <laughs> but I was like, you have to make her crazy. If she's been living, if we're doing real time and she's been living with this for seven years, she's fucking crazy. She's John the Baptist crying in the wilderness. And so that's where we started. So um, then when I read it and saw, I was like, well, I better turn into a soldier. And fitness is part of that. So it's just what had to be done. <laughs> I uh, I was reading here that you had some hearing loss after a little bit of an accident yeah. on the set. Yeah. Can you tell us about that, that? That was in the hotel elevator uh, when Arnold is firing his shotgun at the T-1000 that's also squibs are going off all around as I'm firing. He's firing his big ass, uh, you know, Shotgun, and I just forgot to put ear protection in. I just failed to notice that I didn't have it in, and I'm like this close to his gun and in a cl an enclosed space. So I, I, I felt my knees. I thought I'd been shot, which I knew was not probably very realistic, but the pain, like I went to my knees oh. and then. Everybody else seemed to not care. And so, and the squibs are going off. It takes like an, an hour and a half to set them up. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not shot. And I just got back up and kept on firing until the end of the sequence. But yeah, that was just, you know, one of the fun stories. Right. He had a good Super Bowl commercial, Arnold. Yeah, Arnold had a big, uh, had a funny Super that. Bowl commercial. Yeah. Yeah, Jake, Jake and Arnold are an <laughs> item now. Thick as thieves, yeah. <laughs> oh, so I, I hear you're going to be in the new season of Stranger Things, the final season. Um, I am. really excited to see you there. Is there anything you could tell us about it and what it was like filming? I'm sure there's like a ton of secrecy involved. Like, do you have to can't film? say a bloody thing? You can't say a can't bloody thing. Say a bloody thing, and we're only just beginning. It's going to be another year before it comes out. Oh wow! You can say where yeah. they film it, though, right? They... Yes, Atlanta. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. you got to so you got to relocate back and forth, there. back and forth for the next year, and then hopefully, uh, Resident Alien, which is the show that airs tonight, that starts season three tonight, and I love that show. How is it working with Aaron. Alan Tudyk? He is uh, got to be one of the most talented actors there that exists. Absolutely, I agree with you. He is just a genius, and um, he plays a perfect alien in this show. It, mm -hmm. Perfect for him. I gotta say, it's just such a fun experience all the way around. All the comedy around me, really good cast of comedians, and Chris Sheridan, our writer, is just the most wonderful writer. You know, it's funny, it's 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 oddball, and then all of a sudden it just gets you in a way that is so poignant and fun. You right. know what I mean? It's just, it's lovely, lovely writing. I read that uh, you, you're starting to believe in aliens yourself. 
<laughs> starting to. Um, <laughs> was that what did that come out today? Yeah. <laughs> no, I do believe in alien life, of course. We'd be, you know, utterly arrogant to think we're the only alien life force in our galaxy and the many others. But I do think maybe that aliens make sense to me that aliens could be us traveling from the future when we've worked out the time space continuum, you know, and it's just like that. It uh, kind of makes sense. But, well, you, you know, they <clears throat> actually released a, a photograph, a diagram of what we might look like in the future at, uh, with evolution and with the way that our um our lives inform our looks as we go on and our eyes are big right. and we're smaller and we're gray. We don't get the sun. Um, we've got long fingers because we have our devices. I mean, I swear to God, the, <laughs> us in the future, according to evolution, looks just like the aliens. Well, so that's about. Yeah, I heard somebody saying, you know, if you went back to – you know, Roman times and drop somebody off with a smartphone and, you know, an airplane, an electric car or something, they would think we were aliens. I mean, uh -huh. they they yes. wouldn't know how to wrap their heads around us, you know. Right. And so we start thinking about aircraft or spacecraft that can travel light years or something and we go oh get out of here that doesn't exist yeah not for us not now just oh, like the cell phone but. didn't didn't exist i mean I, I don't know why i was thinking about it yesterday but there's this new trend where you're supposed to go out and take walks without your phone and and, <laughs> and all the information in your phone you know so it was a sort of walk with nature or just walk alone which i i I support, but I was picturing telling my grandfather this concept, like you got to leave without your phone. And he'd go, what are you talking about? The phone is bolted to the Attached wall in the kitchen. The I'd go, no, but no phone, just walk, you know? And he'd be like, of course there's no phone. There is no phone. And I would have like tried to explain to him, no, there's a phone the size of a pack of cigarettes and you can do anything you want on it. And you can talk to people in Europe or do calculations on it or scan and get any book in the library on it. He would have thought I was an alien. It was that that would have sounded like insanity. And all he had to do is go back to, you know, 1985. We're not talking about going back thousands of years or different generations or anything. We're just talking about just getting back literally into, I was, you know, I graduated high school in 1982. Like that would have sounded like crazy alien talk in 1982, to me, right, and so maybe we're maybe we're seeing some version of us that's two thousand years in the future. We just don't recognize ourselves. Well, I mean, you know, we go we go like no aircraft or drone that we possess has that technology, you know, and so you go okay, well. A hundred years ago, we had biplanes covered with canvas on a wood frame and a propeller in front, you know, and, and a few, just a few years before that, we had no airplanes, nothing existed. I mean, the, the Wright brothers had an airplane that steered itself by them laying on their belly and bending the wing, like flexing the wing. They didn't have ailerons and rudders. They just like leaned and like <laughs> bent it and went like, all right, we'll turn this way. All right. Then, then, a few years later, we're in the middle of World War II, and we have ball turret gunners and B-17s and Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I mean, we move just in the air travel department. Right. You go back from Wright Brothers to the Concorde, that was 60 years. That wasn't that long a period of time. Boom. We go fast. And now we have all the drones and hypersonic blah, blah, blah. But yeah, 2,000 years from now, whatever those flying things are doing, yeah, that could be us. I like this. Yeah. We could handle that yeah. easily. If you look at the progression, we should be there in the next, like, 150 years. Forget about 2,000 years if you look at aeronautically the way we roll, you know? So there's also, I don't, I don't have any conspiracy theories that are off the table anymore. They're all on there. 
I used to laugh at everybody with a cons- everyone with any Kennedy stuff or aliens, any of it. I was all like, "Oh, get the fuck out of here!" Now it's all on the table for me. Right. I'm, I'm listening to anybody's theory, and I don't even have conspiracy theories anymore. This is just your theory at this point, and I will listen. It- yeah, well, that's the size of it. It's not mine. Something that I read and. But um, I try not to have opinions. I think that's really what's killing our world is all the puffed up op- opinions. So I don't care about being right. I mean, obviously, that sounds, but I will listen to anyone's argument about anything and try to show them respect, right? Like, I, I don't have to be right and pedantic and, you know, punching my way through and, I don't know. I just really have gotten quieter and quieter. Uh, like, my opinion doesn't matter. Well, I think you should take the posture of when people are explaining to you their opinion, you should be trying to make the pieces fit in in your head, and which, which people say certain things that seem patently bizarre or untrue or come on, how could that be? But then as they explain it, you should be, instead of trying to sort of rebut it and buffer it, you know, try to go, okay, I know I could see where that might make some sense. And I understand where they're going here. Like try to, try to be on their side with it. Attempt to solve the riddle instead of a sort of defensive posture where you're just sort of pushing back on it. Just the, the meaning of, you know, empathy and, um, and you know, you're not inflamed with your own perfect, you know, argument. If you could just sort of open all those channels and hear other people, I, I think, and continue to be calm. <laughs> uh, you know, I just think it's a real gift to be able to listen and, and try to understand. Uh, yes. No, I, I, I agree. But I also think it's a two way street. The people that are trying to explain need to give an explanation, not some bullshit quick answer to get you to go away, which I believe there's a fair amount of that stuff. Otherwise it would, it wouldn't be a dialogue if that's what it is. That's no dialogue. I love dialogue. I agree. Real dialogue. You picked the right profession. Resident alien is the name of the series. Third season returns today, as you hear this on Sci-Fi. And then uh, Stranger Things will keep keep us posted on on that. All right. As well. All right. Enjoy your time in Atlanta and in New Orleans as well. I'll do it. Always, All right. Always good to catch up. See you guys soon. Thanks, Linda Thank Hamilton. You. All right. Uh, always interesting. You're totally right. She inspired so many women to get fit. Yeah, and not to not be fat. Right. Get jacked. The Sarah Connor look. Yep. All right. Vegas coming up. Uh, Going to be Kimmel's Comedy Club February 22nd. A couple of shows coming up then. And then you can go to amcrow.com for all the live shows. And uh, check out Jeff Leach as well at the Comedy Cellar. In Vegas, March 11th through the 25th. Until next time, Sam Crawford, Lynn Hamilton, Chris Max Patton, Jeff Leach. Say it. Mahala. Mahala.